So we're now going to learn how to do the six steps to inferential statistics. We're actually going to take all the things that we learned in previous videos and put them together. So there's really nothing new presented here other than we're going to put it all together. And you may have um, remembered from a previous video that I said that making your research question is probably the most important step because you have to get it right. And if you get that research question right, then the rest of the steps really flow from that. So I just want to show you a trick for getting your research question right. Let me read this prompt first. So it, is, it says, it is known that in February, Orange County has an average temperature of 69 degrees with a standard deviation of 8. Today, Orange County is 74 degrees. Do the six steps to inferential statistics to see if today is significantly different from average. So what I'm going to do is in this prompt, I'm going to copy where it says, do the six steps to inferential statistics to see if and I'm going to copy today is significantly different from average because that's really the research question I'm going for. So I'm going to create a new prompt here and paste that. And so I have to rework it a little bit. So is today significantly different from average? Now, I don't really need this word here significantly because it's kind of um, repeated. In statistics, if it's different, we consider it significantly different. Um, we would only talk about differences that are significant. So I could leave it as, is today, uh, let's see, let's be clear, is today's temperature different from average? So you notice that that's kind of all, oops, that's all the piece that I needed. Now, if I wanted to do step two, um, I could do that copy and paste thing again uh, that I showed you in the previous video. And I just realized there's some formatting here that I want it not to have. Just don't format. Okay, that will be confusing when it's trying to format. All right, so if I go to step two, what I want to do now is um, have my um, null and alternative hypotheses set up. And they're really going to come from that research question. So if I do this, um, I might start off with the null and then go and do the alternative, right? But remember, the alternative really is the research question as a statement. So I still have this kind of um, research question being represented, but I'm going to put it into a statement here for the null, or sorry, for the alternative. So I'm going to take off the is, because it's not a question anymore. It's going to say today's temperature is different from average. And then remember what we do for the null to make that the opposite. So if you're not sure what I'm doing right here, you may want to go back to the lectures or the video on how to make a null and alternative hypothesis. But if you do recall, remember we add the word not. So we say today's temperature is not different from average. So, so far we've completed two of the six steps. So our third step is where we set up our rejection region. And this is kind of like if you're tossing a coin in the air, you can't wait till it lands, look at it, and then say it's going to be heads, right? Or, and I win if it's heads. You have to call it while it's in the air before you actually see the outcome. And that's what we're doing here. We're saying, when are we gonna define this as being different? Um, and we're gonna define it before we even look at the numbers. So here we're gonna define our rejection region. Um, and we can do that with words or with um, pictures. And you might have seen in the previous video, I like pictures, pictures really work for me. But um, if you don't, you can always put it in words. So I'll show you both. I'm just going to put some space in here so I have room to write my other things. I <laughs> uh, might need a little bit of space here. There we go. All right, so there's going to be the size of our steps. So let me show you um, what it would look like to draw it. One of the first things I have to think about is if this is um, a one-tailed or a two-tailed test. So let's look at our research question. It says, is today's temperature different from average? So what key word in there might illuminate whether it's one-tailed or two-tailed? And hopefully you're thinking of the word different. So this word different implies it's two-tailed. Notice that I didn't say is today hotter than average because that would have been an, uh, an upper-tailed test. So this word different means it could be lower, it could be above. I don't know. I'm leaving it open. So here's how I would draw that. just need to change tools here. All right. I'll put it back in... Um, all right, so what I want to do is draw my distribution. I guess I didn't need to draw something. Draw my distribution, and then I want to define the tails. So I'm going to have two lines, 
this is going to be my rejection region and this could be my rejection region. To make sure that I know what, I'm, what regions they are, I'm gonna label it RR for rejection region on both sides so that I don't forget that this is the region of rejection. So that way I'm not confused later what I'm supposed to do. But I'm not quite done. I wanna make sure that I know that this should be a 1.96. Oh my gosh, the handwriting, sorry. 1.96. So anything of a 1.96 and above would be in the rejection region, and this would be a negative 1.96. So if you're not sure where I got these numbers, go back and check out the videos on rejection regions. Now, I notice that's one way I could write it in um, with drawing, um, but I could also do it in symbols. Um, so it's not, you know, it's not required that I do it that way. So I could come down here and I could have said, um, any score more than 1.96 or less than negative 1.96. So see how I've written out um, in words here, I'll just put quotes around it, what I've drawn in pictures. I think to begin with, it's ideal to do pictures because um, then you really see where the score is and you're not having as much doubt as to what to do. I find the students who tend to default to putting it into words get lost sooner um, when trying to figure out what to do. All right, so we're halfway there. We have defined our research question, we've done our null and alternative hypotheses, and now we've defined our rejection region. So now it's time to do some math. So for step four, we're actually gonna calculate what our z-score is. Oops, did I forget to put this back in scribble? Okay, I suppose I can just leave that up. All right, so I'm gonna use the numbers from the prompt up above. So remember our formula is z equals your score minus the mu divided by the standard deviation. And so my score is really gonna to be today's temperature. So looking up at the prompt above, which number do you think is going to be my score? Hopefully you, saw the 74. So our z score is gonna be 74 minus, now what's the um, mu? And that's going to be 69. And then what is our standard deviation? And hopefully you see that that and it's labeled standard deviation, so it's a little bit more clear, but that's going to be 8. So now we're going to have to break out our calculators unless you're wicked good at simple math, which I am not. So I'll break out my calculator. So now we're going to do, uh, put these numbers in our calculator. So I have my 74 minus my 69 degrees divided by the eight, and that gives me a 0 0.65. So now I can go back and put that in my um, page here. So here I wanna say that my number is zero, oops, my wrong thing, there we go. 0.625. So the most important thing to do at this point is to put the 0.625 in my picture. So take a moment to think where you think it goes, and then I'll see if we agree. So I know it's going, here's the line for zero, and so it's probably going to be right about here, right? So this is where my z-score is. It's in this middle zone. Since it's in that middle zone, I'm not going to reject the null. Remember, this middle zone is where we fail to reject the null. So I'll kind of put this in yellow here. This is the fail, oh, that's not yellow, there it is. That's fail to reject. Um, we wanted it to be in the red zone. And remember the red zone was this rejection, <laughs> that's confusing. I'll just quit doing that. All right, so um, we wanted it to be in, um, if I do it this way, we want, if we want to reject the null, we want it to be in this red zone here. It wasn't in the red zone, it's in the, in between them. So we are going to fail to reject the null. And since we fail to reject the null, we're going to have to go with the conclusion that is the null. Otherwise we would have crossed it off. But since we re didn't reject the null, we're not gonna cross it off and that's the conclusion we're gonna make. So for step five, that's what you make your conclusion where you reject or fail to reject the null. And so here, I can probably just type it so you can read my handwriting. If I were to come here, I would say, I'm just moving down because I wrote into the space, but here my conclusion for step five would be fail to 
reject the null. Um, I didn't find enough evidence. Since I failed to reject the null, then I can go down here in step six and make a conclusion. And really all that I can end up saying today, or saying because I failed to reject the null, is that today's temperature is not different from average. So what we end up doing is making the conclusion that we are left with. If we had rejected the null because the z-score was in this rejection region, then I could have um, made a conclusion that was stemming from the alternative. But in this case, the, um, the z-score was in the middle, and so we failed to reject the null, so the only conclusion we can make is that there is no difference.